Very good morning and thank you for joining us so early in the day for our quarter three earning calls. Uh, on this call, I am joined by the senior team members uh, of the bank. Before I share the key highlights of the previous quarter, uh, I would like to start with the big picture and take you through our core strategy, its underlying drivers and the critical business levers of our profitability improvement roadmap. On page 5 of our investor presentation, uh, we have tabulated the balance sheet mix and ROA tree of fiscal 23 of Yes Bank side by side with the average of our mid and large size peers. And from there you would see that fundamentally there are five underlying drivers or anchors, which in our assessment have the maximum bearing in our net income improvement. Reduction in our PSL shortfall, number one. Improvement in our CASA mix, number two. Improvement, improving our SATs through risk calibrated mix change, number three. Increasing our non-interest income and lastly, reducing our cost to income ratio. Our focus strategy to address the above issues has already started to reflect in numbers for the current financial year. Our organic accretion in PSL sub buckets of small and marginal farmer, non corporate farmer, and weaker section is already up by 1.6x, 1.4x, and 1.2x from March 23 levels. Together with the other inorganic interventions, <coughs> bank has seen a meaningful reduction in the above subcategory shortfalls. We have also made our branches becoming the key fulcrum of our entire business strategy. By Q3, the share of our branch banking deposits in our total bank deposit has increased to 55% uh, from 52% in beginning of the year. Despite a challenging environment in 12 months, our branch banking CASA has grown 18.2% compared to 12.2% at Yes Bank and 7.2% for peers. In retail advances, the share of internal sourcing has improved to 43% from 37%. Uh, at the beginning of the year. Since March 23, the share of higher ROA accretive products has improved by 8%. In all three quarters of current fiscal, the YUI core fee income growth has been between 23 to 35%, as a result of which, Core fee as a percentage of total assets has increased from 1.1% in March to 1.2% in December 23 quarter. A strong focus on SME and mid-market segment, uh, which are growing at 25% plus, both are high quality books with significantly low NPA levels across business cycles. Both the businesses are good source of fee income and low cost liabilities. Our strategy to build an agile organization through review of org structure, process improvement and cost optimization have already started yielding results. Quarter 3 is successive quarter of less than 1% quarter-on-quarter growth in operating expenses. 
Now let me quickly take you through the highlights of the third quarter. <coughs> Our YUI deposit growth, excluding certificate of deposit, is at 15%. And which is higher than our YUI advances growth of 13.6% after excluding the interbank reverse repo, uh, which was there in the third quarter of the last financial year. Within deposits in quarter C, our CASA ratio sequentially improved to 29.7% from 29.4, led by a 7% sequential growth in saving accounts and marginal improvement in the current account. We added nearly 4 lakh new retail CASA accounts during the quarter and 80% of individual and sole proprietor current accounts and 96% of eligible saving accounts were opened digitally. Despite the persistently challenging environment in trailing 12 months, uh, we have continued to see an outperformance in total branch banking deposits, which have grown by 22% YOY. The outperformance was even more in case of branch banking CASA deposit, and the incremental branch banking CASA ratio is coming at 30% plus over the same period. Within advances, we saw sustained momentum in our SNE and mid-market segments, both are up 24% and 26.4% YUY respectively. Our CD ratio at December quarter end was 89.9, nearly flattish on YUY and quarter on quarter basis. Every liquidity coverage ratio for the quarter was healthy at 118.4. CD ratio for the quarter was at 12.6, uh, which is 13% in quarter 3 and 13.1% in quarter 2 of the financial year, current financial year. The impact of regulatory mandated increase in risk weights was 40 basis points, uh, which was fully offset by organic CET accretion, uh, including profits of 50 basis points. As communicated earlier, we expect another 100 to 110 basis point of accretion in CET ratio post the conversion of outstanding warrants. Moving over to margins, operating expenses, and asset quality and the profitability. Despite headwinds on deposits and funding costs, our net interest margin expanded by 10 basis points quarter on quarter and came in at 2.4% against 2.3% last quarter, uh, which is largely driven by efficient balance sheet management, even as the advances yield and the cost of funds remain largely flattish. Uh, in quarter three, our non-interest income uh, was at 1,195 crores and adjusting for realized, unrealized gains on the investment, the core non-interest income has grown by 23.4% YUI. As I was sharing earlier, December quarter was second successive quarter of less than 1% quarter on quarter increase in the OPEX. Operating expenses were at 2,347 crores up 10.6% YOY and only 0.6% quarter on quarter. Adjusting for the PSLC cost, operating expenses are up only by 7.2% YOY and have actually declined by 0.8% quarter on quarter. Provision costs came in at 0.6% which is flattish quarter on quarter despite 0.5% uh, aging related provisions on the security receipts uh, during the quarter. AIF related provisions have been fully absorbed at 12.5 crores. There was an all round improvement in asset quality 
uh, with 30 basis point quarter on quarter reduction in net NPA and net carrying value of security receipts as percentage of advances, which improved to 1.7% in quarter 3 against 2.5% in the corresponding quarter last year and 2% in the previous quarter. If strong resolution momentum continued with recoveries and resolution at 1,316 crores in current quarter, since ARC transaction in December 22, uh, there has been cumulative redemption of 2,836 crores uh, in the security receipts. Slippage GNPA NNPA ratios have been flattish quarter on quarter. Uh, the provision coverage ratio marginally improved to 56.6% and including technical write-off, the provision coverage ratio is 71.9%. Our quarter three net profit at 231 crores is up by 349% YOY and 2.8% quarter on quarter. The other key highlights, last quarter we went live on interoperable cardless cash withdrawal framework, uh, which allows withdrawal of cash from ATMs via UPI uh, without using any card. We also integrated with the leading discount stock brokerage firm uh, to offer secondary ASPA services to our customers. We also made new strides in responsible banking and our bank has topped amongst all Indian banks with highest S&P global ESG score in 2023. Uh, we have been included in BSC Next 50 and BSC 100 indices. In January 24, uh, we achieved yet another feat of being certified as a great place to work, second year in a row. Uh, during the quarter, we, we were also joined by Mr. Tushar Kadankar as a Chief Risk Officer and Mr. Rajat Chalani as the Chief Compliance Officer. Thank you once again uh, for joining us so early in the day and now we can take your questions. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. You may please press star and one to ask questions. The first question is from the line of Deepak from Aryan Share and Stock Brokers. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, uh, and uh, I'm a congratulations for a well uh, for a very good quarter. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Deepak. Yeah. So I just wanted to know, is there anything uh, in future for the 81, bo 81 bond, any provisions to be made? Uh, Deepak, I think this issue has been discussed in detail earlier. And at this point of time, since the matter is pending in the Honorable Supreme Court, uh, we would not like to make any comment on this. So is there any provisioning to be made on that, sir? No, no. I, uh, what I am saying, uh, the entire clarification on this part has been done. But at this point of time, to make a argument why there is no need to make a provision uh, would not be correct as the matter is pending in the Honorable Supreme Court. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amai, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, please. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, just a qu uh, just a quick follow-up question on 81. Do we know uh, when is the next uh, date in the Supreme Court, and how do we know when when is the date? Um, I 
in fact, I try to know, but I don't find a way to uh, figure out when when is the next date. Actually, this was slated to appear today, okay, uh, but it has not come in the final listing as of date, and I think we would come to know from the registry of the Honorable Supreme Court when it will come on the next date. Got it. Thank you, sir. That's all. Thank you. The next question is from the line of MB Mahesh from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, good morning. Um, two questions from my side, sir. Uh, first one is on the cost of funds. Um, the increase has been uh, for this quarter relatively smaller as compared to the last two quarters. If you could just tell us uh, at your portfolio level, given the kind of maturity that you're seeing in your term deposits, how are you seeing the term, the cost of funds kind of moving over the next couple of quarters? This is the first question. The second question pertains to the slippages that we are seeing on the retail portfolio. Uh, this quarter has been on the higher side. If you could just kind of give us a, a, a context into what is driving these retail slippages. Thank you. Sure. Uh, um, on the cost of funding to the first question that you asked, uh, Mahesh, if you recall, we've been saying that the bulk of the repricing uh, you know, has been absorbed uh, uh, till September, um, and since then, at least in terms of what we are observing as a pendency in deposit repricing, we're looking at a, uh, you know, not any material impact over the next one or two quarters. Having said that, Mahesh, um, uh, what we also are conscious about uh, are, uh, you know, uh, the industry and the liquidity landscape uh, could mean that there could be room for us to continue to work on uh, work on the race. Um, although our conscious effort is relative to the industry, we need to keep uh, you know keep performing better relative to the industry. But as of now, um, when we look at the repricing or pendency of portfolio, there is a very minimalistic impact uh, from a from a TD repricing on cost of funding. And just to add on this question, um, let's say in the month of January so far, the situation on the deposit mobilization has been at par. Right? To last quarter worsened or it continues to remain or it has improved. Where would you kind of put the situation today? So uh, uh, at a at an effort level, I have to say efforts are uh, higher uh, for mobilizing uh, the uh, you know the deposits that we would have otherwise uh, otherwise take. Uh, but uh, from our perspective, I think the momentum in Jan continues to be similar to what we typically observe. Uh, around this time of the year. Okay, perfect. The second question uh, on the retail slippage. Yeah. So on the retail uh, slippages, uh, obviously there has been, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, concern in the last couple of uh, quarters brewing. So we took uh, some measures in terms of, you know, the revision in the scorecards, BREs, uh, also in terms of, you know, tightening the uh, credit process. So, uh, I would say that more or less uh, we have now reached a plateau and from there uh, we see that, you know, in the coming uh, uh, quarters, we will see uh, uh, this getting, uh, you know, in a stable state. But good part is that uh, bucket by bucket uh, there is an improvement in the resolution. Uh, so, we see uh, uh, a better resolution in the uh, coming quarters from this level. So, uh, our expectation is that the slippages will continue for one or two quarters. It will it will not rise from here and then it will start uh, declining. So, just to understand uh, what is driving these slippages, which part of the product portfolio within retail? So, largely uh, the unsecured uh, assets. And also, you know, some of these segments, a uh, few here and there, but those were minor, but largely we have seen that, you know, the unsecured portfolio needed a uh, lot of corrections and very timely corrections which have actually happened and now is showing the results. Okay. No. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Sri Karthik Vellamakkani from Investec. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, 
Uh, question on the uh, risk weight assets. Uh, you've uh, not disclosed the number. Could you one disclose it and two walk us through the uh, movement to CT one today uh, this quarter, particularly in the context of the uh, uh, BTA unwind and the uh, uh, consumption due to unsecured uh, risk weighting season. Uh, Happy hi. Um, so the risk weight um, number is about uh, 2.7 trillion rupees, uh, which was about 2.58 uh, trillion rupees uh, in the previous quarter. So we had about um, uh, 12,000 crores of uh, increased, 12, 12 and a half thousand crores of increase in the risk weighted assets. Uh, almost, uh, almost us uh, 7,800 crores. Uh, uh, did come in from uh, the the new RPI circular. Now, if I were to if I were to just split this from a capital consumption, uh, what uh, like, you know, like Prashant also mentioned in his opening remarks, we had about uh, 40 basis points of uh, burn that came in because of uh, the the new RPI circular. Uh, outside of that, we had about a net 10 basis points of uh, 10 basis points of consumption. Uh, which was a function of both growth uh, that we had, uh, as well as the um, you know this is the profitability, the TTA, and some amount of continuous work that we keep doing on uh, you know, the rating profile plus um, uh, plus this is like retail portfolio coming through. A combination of that, we had a 10 basis points of uh, net consumption. But both profits and TTA release would be about uh, 20 basis points uh, of that work. And the 10 bits decline due to the PSL shortfall is an implied profitability hit, is it, Rajan? No, that's it's just that if you if you look at the balances uh, increase that we've had, um, uh, we've had about a net uh, 10,000 crores of increase uh, in the PSL shortfall deposits uh, between September and December quarter. Uh, and as a consequence, we also end up uh, allocating capital on that because it does attract uh, you know, risk weighted assets. So, uh, you know, it's it's a function of that. Oh, okay. So, despite being sovereign guaranteed in nature, there is a capital hit also due to PSL. That's that's right. That's right, Kathik. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the other question is in our on our car and car group. So, generally, uh, I I think it was part of your uh, opening remarks also that the uh, car car growth has been faster than system. Uh, what, uh, and I see that the branch additions have not been that high. Uh, what's what's contributing to this? The higher Kata growth relative to where it is today. So, Kathik, uh, uh, from from our vantage point, uh, so there are there are two things here, right? One, um, for us, we are operating at a uh, twenty nine point you know seven percent of Kasa ratio. So, we clearly have a priority to continue to improve. Uh, our, our both current account and savings account, right? Um, number one. Number two, when therefore we look at an execution plan, uh, clearly there is a higher amount of focus that is given uh, to mobilizing mobilizing the current account uh, and savings account, um, uh, uh, right? Uh, number three is we are looking at a loan growth which has been in the range of about 13%, and as a consequence, we are also looking at a deposit growth of 15 to 16%. In that context, uh, you know, we we do we do find that uh, delivering a growth uh, of CASA, which is higher than our deposit growth, is something which uh, we are all uh, working towards, right? So it's a very very focused execution plan, and a consequence of those execution plans are uh, discipline around productivity efficiencies at the branch level. Monitoring profitability of each and every branch, um, you know, making sure the incentive structures are are rightly aligned, not only for uh, not only for just acquiring customers, but making sure that they maintain balances uh, over the M3, M6 uh, period as well. So it's it's a function and culmination of all of those elements, you know, which we've been investing over the last uh, you know uh, you know two to three years. Uh, we are finding outcomes of those, and we're quite actually. Satisfied that uh, I know 29.5% uh, is is not is not a very high CASA ratio, but we are quite satisfied that a lot of the SA that is also coming through. If I just look at over the last one year, it's not that you know our blended SA rate would have actually increased. So it's not that we are throwing rates uh, to acquire the savings account. It's a function of very hardcore execution in retail 
um, you know, to drive the balances. Thanks. I'll come back. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Maruk Adadrania from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. I have two questions uh, on the dis. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Please proceed. Yeah. You're audible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, hi. Uh, I have two questions. The first is on personal loans. That was discussed a bit. Um, so, uh, why were tightening measures required in personal loans? What was your ticket size? Uh, most of it would be salaried, right? So, what was your ticket size? And in general, is it uh, is there some read through for the sector uh, on that bit? And secondly, on uh, just the realization of security receipts. I know it happens as and when, but uh, is there any path you can guide us to uh, to build better estimates? Okay. Now, first, commenting on the first question on the personal loans. Uh, so, our average ticket size uh, remains around 2.5 lakhs. Uh, however, uh, you know the the segments which were uh, which which were uh, you know uh, a topic of concern for the entire industry were uh, one was the NTC the new to credit uh, which was contributing to almost 25% uh, of the industry's acquisition. Uh, I think that has uh, which was showing a very good behavior for two years uh, started showing some stress. So at an industry level, uh, there is a there is a concern and there is a cut on that particular segment. Uh, the second one obviously is uh, where the income levels were, you know, less than uh, 30,000 uh, a month. So these are the two segments which have been uh, which have been cut and uh, this is not just for us but this is at an industry level. Uh, uh, so having said that, I think the most of the concerns which we have tried to capture and try to bring the portfolio, uh, you know, back on track are around these two uh, segments. Sure. Uh, and uh, on the realization of SR? So, so basically when we started, like when this transaction happened, uh, we had the security receipts uh, of 8,853 uh, on gross basis, okay, uh, which has already come down to 6,393 in one year. Okay. So, so fundamentally, if you see out of 8,853, uh, almost 2,500 have been redeemed. Uh, very, very difficult to predict uh, when the remaining security receipts uh, would be realized. But I think with the track record, uh, we have not seen in one year uh, more than 25% of the security receipts uh, have been redeemed. And actually, we have also seen the recoveries over and above the security receipt. Uh, and if, if you see the other part, uh, we are continuously making the provisions on the remaining security receipt. And today the net sharing value of security receipt uh, has come down to 0.8%. Okay. Uh, so, 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 and our provision coverage ratio on the security receipt is 73.2. Uh, our objective is and to bring down the net NPA and the net carrying value of security receipt uh, below 1% uh, in, in the next three quarters. Okay, sir, that's very helpful. Uh, sir, uh, just one more question. Well, I know that uh, uh, you did your LDR has kind of stood steady. Uh, but in general, in the whole debate on LDR for the industry, where do you think you stand? Um, you know, because in general, for everyone, it appears that now LDRs need to come down. Do you think that that's the case for you as well? So, 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 Maru, we are quite happy uh, with the LDR of around 90%. Okay, uh, and this 90% is important for us uh, in terms of both profitability. Uh, as well as uh, the keeping those kind of margins. But if you see that we are continuously focusing on the deposit growth uh, higher than the loan growth. 
So at no point of time uh, we are allowing our LD, LDR to go below 90. Uh, it means higher than 90. And going forward also our strategy would be continuously deposit growth higher than the loan growth. But 90% for us uh, is quite satisfactory, especially when you see a very large amount is being parked in the RIDF to take care of our shortfall in the PSL. So today 11% of our total assets are sitting actually in the RIDF. I think if you take into account this part, the 90% LDR is quite satisfactory. Got it. So this is something that even the regulator would be comfortable with, right? Because there is now a sudden talk that the regulator may not be comfortable with LDRs of some banks. Not specifically yours, but some banks. That's why I asked him. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, so, firstly, on this unsecured fees uh, that we have seen uh, kind of uh, some uh, high slippage in the retail segment, so as you clearly mentioned, uh, that is largely from the um, uh, new to credit customer and not from the existing customer base. Uh, so, usually means just wanted to understand the underwriting which we are doing so that uh, there is no concern on that uh, on the civil score or on the based on the past track record of your underwriting so that should be okay and only this is from the new to credit where the stress is uh, coming up is that a fair uh, assumption so you know uh, the retail uh, business uh, which you fully understand goes through uh, its own cycles over a span of uh, five years to six years and whenever, you know, there is a, any signs of stress appearing, the following actions are usually taken. One, uh, to take the, uh, the, the uh, entry scores up, uh, to tighten the uh, criteria around uh, the income levels and FYR. Uh, and third one is to look at the customers where you have a limited uh, understanding, right? Your internal customers will always behave better because not just, uh, you know, you have information on their scores, but you also have an information on their transaction history, right? So that will always make it more uh, stronger and they will always behave on a relative scale uh, better. Uh, the concern always will be the, the new to bank customers and within new to bank, then you segment uh, which income bands you want to purchase or where do you see stress, you, you, you kind of again dissect it between the uh, credit scores and then bureau scores and then you again uh, segment it uh, between the profiles, the locations, the demographics. So you get into full detail when you have to review to, uh, to tighten the criteria. So I would say instead of, you know, and, and what I alluded to was some of the segments which largely, uh, you know, have shown signs of stress. But whenever uh, you get into this cycle, and I would not say that we are actually into the cycle, but, but there was a bit of correction required uh, at industry level. And in line with that, we have taken actions across this. So it is not just cutting one segment. You have to take multiple actions to control. And fortunately, uh, the signs are, are, are quickly seen in terms of your new to bank uh, population, which is coming into as an inflow uh, to the bank. So that is, uh, that is a positive sign. Sure, sure. And so, so usually the foyer for the below 30k customers so would be there, there is some stress. So, uh, so what will be the foyer for that 40-50% or even more than that? So, it will, uh, so this is, you know, today it is not as simple as it used to be a couple of years back. Today you segment the customer and then decide. You know, CAT A company or a CAT B company or a CAT C company would all have a different approach to underwrite. So I would say there are multiple factors. It is a four sophisticated scorecard which today is applied as compared to the erstwhile file. So this is, uh, I would say, the tightening on various fronts, not just the income uh, to, to the loan ratio, but also to the AMI ratio, but also to the thresholds of what is your entry level for uh, income. Even that is into the consideration, including, uh, you know, putting the category, the categorization of the companies from your employee comes. 
sure sir and also so secondly on that um, profitability part uh, thanks for that for the viewers the uh, improvement in profitability so we have mentioned that uh, increase in uh, organic csl so we uh, there were some talks earlier of uh, uh, acquisition some inorganic acquisition uh, to boost csl so i uh, is that uh, still on are we still working towards that and um, on the psl or yeah so firstly it is on that yeah and now uh, come to the last question Uh, so uh, yes, there is there is work happening uh, to find uh, to find ways to accelerate the the uh, uh, you know the um, the PSL journey for us. But having said that, uh, you know clearly when you look at creating or acquire acquisitions, it obviously is time consuming. You need to have right fits, and there are multiple criteria that go into the evaluation. So it it does take uh, time. But I think, having said that, uh, I think it's important to note that uh, it's not that we are just waiting for that lever to, uh, uh, you know, uh, express itself in our balance sheet. We continue to work on our own organic channels. We continue to work on other means uh, of uh, of inorganic acquisitions into into the balance sheet for complying with the PSL. And again, uh, you know, I will again refer to Prashant's opening remarks where he. Uh, where he's been say, where he said that if we look at uh, our problem in PSL, which is in subcategories of small and marginal farmers, uh, non-corporate farmers, uh, and um, uh, and weaker section, across these three subcategories, if we look at our compliance to PSL, uh, we have only been improving uh, quarter on quarter, and it's actually part of our uh, presentation as well. So it's not that we are just waiting for this. you know inorganic acquisition as a lever to come in and express itself yes it will further propel and and uh, you know accelerate uh, the uh, you know the acquisition machinery but having said that we are now looking at very nominal numbers of non compliance in in fiscal 24 across the subcategories so and the answer one last is just on the, that 1% roi mark uh, aspiration so do we envisage that to come in fy25 or probably in fy26 what could be the rough um, timeline and hence on that uh, i think in them we need to be very realistic uh, and i think one of the the big drag on our profitability is a 11% of our assets sitting in the rds Uh, though we are working very hard and we are quite confident uh, that this year there would not be any shortfall in the PSL, but I think the PSL book coming down to a normalized level uh, would take some time. And I think this is the biggest step. So one percent ROA we we don't see happening in the FY25, uh, but I think the way we are executing our strategy, uh, we may see this one percent ROA in the FY26. And if I also add to that, um, see, one percent ROI for us uh, is very important from the perspective of uh, getting it delivered through core operating profits. Uh, you know, and you would have seen that uh, we continue to have good momentum, resolution, uh, P&L write-backs to the security receipts portfolio. But you would appreciate that what we have been doing very consciously is actually using that to keep reducing the drag on our security receipts and continue to. work on improving the pcr right so i think just to just to uh, mention that uh, roa 1% target uh, is is being thought about from a core operations and not just from a number from a profitability because ultimately we want to get our nnp and sr also below 1% uh, from from the recovery of the sr mm, so for all the very best yeah thank you for that from my side thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Dinesh Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Prashant, uh, and uh, uh, so my two questions uh, on on uh, on uh, basically every month, every quarter, you guys are disbursing about thirty thousand crore rupees of uh, loan, which amounts to and in annual report also you are disclosing that. you have about 1 lakh crore rupees of disbursement in a particular year which amounts to 50% of your portfolio so despite doing that your growth is at about 15% so it means your is it your average loan size is somewhere about 2 years or something like that why it is not translating it into the growth that's point number 1 point number 2 is in the provisions on the on the this, this time the the default on personal loan 
is about 1000 crore your total net interest income for the year is 2000 crore so if your 50% of your portfolio is towards personal loan which is about 1000 crore and you have already uh, you are defaulting your defaults are 1000 crore in a quarter is it mean that 100% of your personal loan net interest income is getting defaulted so is it something some bigger underlying thing is there which we are not understanding or is it the earlier yes bank which is returning now to the fore so um dinesh uh, on the first uh, question of disbursement um uh, so when disbursements happen uh there are uh, there are also repayments that keep happening in the book so i'll give an example of uh, the large corporate business where uh, clearly we have pivoted away from you know the kind of uh, large corporate business that we should do prior to march 20 this is more working capital in nature transactional in nature um, and yes um, we do have a significant amount of fresh disbursement fresh lines that get set up uh, yes utilizations could be uh could could have its motions of you know uh, some quarter the utilizations are high some quarter the utilizations are low but i think the momentum on new business acquisition is very high but having said that in the large corporate book despite the new disbursement and you would have you would have also observed that uh, we do have uh, we have seen degrowth in that book over the last uh, you know 2 to 3 years that is because of our legacy book that we had uh in uh, in the large corporate we've seen repayments um uh, a lot of those we were we were uh, you know consciously uh, triggering those exits uh, so that we continue to reduce uh, the uh, you know the, the 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 legacy assets that we had in our balance sheet it was also uh, one of the uh, strategies for us to reduce uh, those exposures because they were they were also coming in from let's say real estate or hospitality so that journey also coincided with the new acquisitions that were happening in the large corporate and as a result what you see is a net function on the on the loan growth that's number one number two is if you look at similar comparison on the retail side uh, on retail uh, what we are seeing uh, is uh, a, a, a disbursement run rate of about uh, anywhere between 10 to 12000 crores let's say that we might be doing Uh, per quarter but equally we would be having about 6 to 7000 crores of uh, let's say uh, uh, repayments and maturities uh, that happen every quarter so what again you see as a net result is uh, uh, is is uh, post the repayment so what we are seeing is 15% broad uh, 13 to 15% loan growth i think is fairly reflective of new business origination as well as uh, old Uh, the last point i wanted to make is when we look at disbursements it's about making sure that you are uh, penetrating into the relationship of clients uh, what we are quite confident about is that now that we have we are entering and acquiring large scale customers uh, across when i say large scale uh, customers across uh, corporate uh, mid corporates and msme uh, we have a good hook now on these customers and as and when utilizations pick up you will also start seeing those uh, on the loan growth so i think that's just a simple explanation i thought uh, you know i should provide that was the first part of the uh, question i think the second question you asked was on provisions um, uh, and nii which you know we have about 2000 crores of nii and uh, you I, i think the question was uh, you were correlating that with 1000 crores of uh, slippages um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right Uh, so i think the first the first point there is when you look at the uh, nii we are looking at nii also has uh, multiple elements of drag and i think we, we spoke about uh, you know prashant mentioning again and again that there is there is a significant drag coming in from the existing stock of uh, ridf uh, which is sitting today at about uh, in excess of 40000 crores on our balance sheet 11% of the total assets so i, I just want to Uh, contextualize that 2000 is in the first place not a normalized run rate uh, of uh, nii that we should be looking at that's number one number two is uh, like rajan mentioned when you look at a thousand crores of slippage um, you know you do go through cycles uh, uh, where there will be certain uptick in performance um, uh, or delinquencies in certain products in certain geographies uh, in certain segments but i think that is where management intervention comes in is to say 
okay have you identified the problem and have you taken course corrective actions to make sure that incrementally uh, incrementally uh, you know you are uh, you are uh, uh, you, you are kind of not repeating those uh, you know uh, repeating those um, uh, geographies from a disbursement perspective and i think we are quite we are quite uh, pleased to to see that um, we have taken the necessary actions to plug the the new slippages and like rajan mentioned we do believe that the run rate should uh, should start normalizing or uh, reducing from here on i think the third thing which you also have to look at is it's not just the cross slippages there is also a run rate of recoveries uh, and upgrades that we see uh, so while uh, if for the full bank if my annualized uh, slippage ratio is let's say 2.3% uh, actually the net net of recoveries and upgrades the ratio would be about 1.1% to 1.1% right so it's not that the whole block of 2.3% goes into uh, goes into a loss uh, there are recoveries uh, and upgrades that uh, do happen over a period of time the last part i wanted to mention is uh, again um, while the impact of this was acute in september um, but we did see some element of that also play out in december is we also had an accounting policy change where uh, you know uh, and you know we did go through some explanation in the last quarter so i'm not going to spend a whole lot of time but that meant that uh, because of the accounting change in penal interest the delinquency was slightly higher Uh, on uh, on the retail book, uh, but uh, as uh, to, to summarize, you know, we do believe that uh, the, the relevant course corrective actions have been taken, and uh, you know, the delinquency should start stabilizing to uh, reducing from here on. Sure, thanks, thanks. That that answers my question. One last point I wanted to say on on this whole, uh, you know, uh, prior priority sector thing and all, which suddenly got popped up into this particular slide. so were you guys not aware last 3 4 years that this particular thing is was you didn't see it coming and suddenly this has popped up this particular quarter or you were knowing 3 uh, 4 years back and you were working on it and uh, nothing happened and therefore this quarter it has popped up that this has become a now a new reason on the block so um uh, dinesh that's not i mean to be honest we've been if you if you go back to Uh, our commentary also about a year back you know we did mention that we are keen keenly evaluating uh, acquisition of uh, of um, uh, you know of an mfi entity or you know entities that might be in the mfi business this was all keeping in mind uh, that the bank uh, the bank needed uh, to solve uh, its uh, psl sub category uh, you know acquisition right so uh, so we were aware we we have been talking about uh the drag that rids is causing is just that uh, we have uh, brought that out explicitly you know so that we were we were getting these questions uh, um, uh time and again and and we were explaining on on calls um you know through to our commentary but i thought it was just important that as an entity we put that out uh, in absolute clarity uh, as to what could be the drivers um um you know on Uh, on improving the 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 PSL drag and what is the drag? So we just put that out in black and white. That's the that's the only difference. It's not that we were not aware, nor that we have not been guiding um, as to is it, as to whether this is a problem statement for us or not. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Narendra Podwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, Namaskar, Prashant Kumar Ji. Namaskar. सर तो सबसे पहले तो मैं आप लोगों को धन्यवाद दूंगा कि हमारी बैंक के प्रति आप लोगों की जो कमिटमेंट है मैनेजमेंट की कि मंडे मॉर्निंग को आठ बजे आप फोन कॉल करते हैं मार्केट स्टार्ट होने के पहले तो ये आप लोगों की कमिटमेंट और कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नेंस दिखाता है कि आप लोग कितने एग्रेसिव हैं सर मेरा क्वेश्चन कासा के लिए रहेगा की सर आपने आगे भी आंसर दिया सर हमारी कासा अभी तक भी दूसरे बैंक के मुकाबले बहुत कम बढ़ पा रही है और सर मेरा जो एक सोचना है कि मेरा अकाउंट ऑलरेडी येस बैंक में ही है सर लेकिन हम इस समय जितने आईपीओ आ रहे हैं बहुत सारे आईपीओ आ रहे हैं और काफी अचानक इन्वेस्टर्स बहुत एग्रेसिवली आईपीओ भरते हैं सर और वो लोग काफी बैलेंस मेंटेन करते हैं लेकिन फिर भी हमारी बैंक में सर कट ऑफ टाइम तीन बजे का रखा हुआ है जबकि और बैंकों में 
चार बजे का तक का रखते हैं सर हम लोग क्यों एग्रेसिव नहीं बनते हैं सब हमारे कंपेरिजन में दूसरी बैंक के काफी एग्रेसिवली मार्केटिंग कर रही है कि हम सेवन परसेंट दे रहे हैं सिक्स परसेंट दे रहे हैं हम भी सर छह परसेंट के आसपास सेविंग रेट अकाउंट में इंटरेस्ट दे रहे हैं लेकिन फिर भी हमारी कासा उस तरह से नहीं बढ़ पा रही है सर मेरे को भी काफी दिक्कत आती है लास्ट टाइम में हमारी सिस्टम काफी बार बंद हो जाती है तो सर इस तरह का प्लान कीजिए कि टेक्नोलॉजी का टाइम है सर आप थोड़ा सा टाइम बढ़ा के एक एग्रेसिव मार्केटिंग कीजिए तो हमारी कासा वहां से काफी इम्प्रूवमेंट होगी और एक बार कस्टमर हमारे वहाँ अकाउंट खुलाएगा तो दूसरे बैंक में नहीं जाएगा तो फुटबॉल साहब आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद ये बहुत आपने इम्पोर्टेंट हमें फीडबैक दिए हैं और देखिए हमारा जो पूरे बैंक का अगर आप देखें जो फोकस है वो बिल्कुल कस्टमर सेंट्रिक है कि किस तरह हम कस्टमर की को सुविधाएं और दे सकें पर आपका ये जो सुझाव है कि तीन बजे की बजाय अगर हम इसे चार बजे कर सकें बहुत वैल्यूएबल है हम इसको देखते हैं मैं आपको सिर्फ कासा डिपोजिट में सिर्फ एक चीज बताना चाहूंगा आपको मालूम है कि चार साल पहले बैंक जिस हालात में गुजरा था जहाँ पर हमारे डिपॉजिट आधे रह गए थे थोड़ा सा टाइम लगता है जब डिपॉजिट पे पर हमने इस चार साल के अंदर जो डिपॉजिट है हमारे दो गुना से ज्यादा बढ़ चुके हैं और अगर आप देखें पूरी इंडस्ट्री में हर बैंक का कासा रेशो कम हो रहा है पर कम से कम हम लोग अपना जो कासा रेशो है उसे प्रोटेक्ट कर पा रहे हैं वो कासा रेशो हमारा कम नहीं हुआ और ये सब इसी वजह से हुआ कि आप जैसे जो कस्टमर्स हैं उनकी हमें जो पूरी सपोर्ट मिल रही है ये उसी वजह से है पर हमारा भी ये कमिटमेंट है और आपको पूरा विश्वास है कि जो कस्टमर के लिए हम चाहे वो टेक्नोलॉजी या एक एग्रेसिव मार्केटिंग जो आपके सुझाव है उस पर हम पूरा ध्यान देंगे सर मेरा अकाउंट ऑलरेडी जब बैंक में तकलीफ आई थी तब से भी ऑलरेडी अभी तक भी कहीं भी डिस्टर्ब नहीं हुआ है मेरी ऑलरेडी काफी बैलेंस रहती है और बहुत बार क्या सिस्टम बंद रहता है तो हमें फिजिकल फॉर्म फॉर्म भरने होते हैं तो ऊपर से बैंक के ऊपर प्रेशर आता है कि सर आप ये लोग क्यों आप बीड कर रहे हैं एंड टाइम में बीडिंग क्यों कर रहे हैं सर ये सब क्या है दिक्कत बहुत होती है सर आप लोग मतलब क्या है बहुत एग्रेसिव है लेकिन आपकी टीम को भी बोलिए कि थोड़ा सा एग्रेसिव मैच बने सर थोड़ा सा राजन बोल रहा हूँ आपके सुझाव और जो आप हमें फीडबैक दे रहे हैं उसके लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मैं आपके साथ अलग से आपको कॉल करके और समझूंगा आपकी क्या प्रॉब्लम है जिसको हम दूर कर सकें और काफी कस्टमर मेरे काफी क्लोज रिलेटिव है जिनके और दो करोड़ बैलेंस रहते हैं वो लोग दूसरे बैंक में शिफ्ट होने का ट्राई करते हैं सर तो ये क्या है की इस तरह से क्या है की मास्क मतलब क्या हमारी काटा बहुत एग्रेसिवली बढ़ेगी सर इस तरह से नहीं बोलो सर बिल्कुल बिल्कुल आपके जो सुझाव है बहुत वैल्यूएबल है विल वर्क ऑन और आपसे राजे जो है वो पर्सनली भी बात करेंगे ठीक है ठीक है सर धन्यवाद सर थैंक यू Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants, please please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Maruk Adajania from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yes, sorry, sir. I had a follow-up question again on the personal loan bit. So basically, we have weeded out all the customers which were probably looking a little discomforting, and because of closure of lines to them, these slippages have occurred. Or because anyway they were on the lower income side, uh, these slippages have occurred. As in that, were these were some of these BNPL customers given? May not be right, given that your ticket size is high. Or how do we look at the whole piece? so ma'am first of all uh, bncl came as an experiment and it failed so fortunately we never tested waters uh, into that uh, particular segment uh, two is once a customer has come in you have to bear him for 36 months so it is not that you know you can weed him out in between unless you pro you proactively go back and and uh, insist that you close the account which which generally is, is not the likely uh, situation uh, in our internal database proactively when you are looking at acquiring a customer uh, obviously we have weeded out that set of customer which we potentially were putting it up to our teams to acquire so from that extent you are right also from the customers who are coming out from from the outside market we have uh, since we have tightened the criteria so these customers will automatically get rejected so from that extent for new to the bank or from existing customer certain segments have been eliminated but uh, but this is not uh, this is nowhere close to uh, the bnpl model these are the normal personal loan customers 
got it so for going ahead will low, uh, growth in personal loans be slower than earlier only i think uh, growth is not that issue because there are a lot of customers and uh, personal loan is is growing at a particular pace but whenever you will do any uh, kind of policy cuts temporarily there will be a dip in the business and then you again ramp up because you have a large distribution now which also then alters their way of acquiring and and put and bring it back the customer to various banks got it got it but so the key reason for the slippage would be what then as in uh, it's just that uh, the income levels did not support or what would it be in general uh so i can tell you so the 36 months uh, uh, lapse for many this quarter no so i i will give you a industry level answer to it and obviously you know these things do reflect in overall across portfolios one is that customers taking more than one loan after they have taken from you right mm-hmm. that that uh, that tends to be one of uh, one of the bigger reasons and secondly it can be around the income levels not going up or the inflation being high uh, the disposable income coming under stress so there could be various ranges and you know the uh, retail portfolios uh, you know throw you a lot of opportunities to get insight into uh, the portfolio in in various uh, you know uh, squares mm-hmm. which you have to then cut and then then kind of you know look at what is going to be your new acquisition strategy but having said that um, even in personal loans even if i i dissect the quarter between the three months we have seen a very uh, very good month uh, december month where the resolution rates have really uh, gone up to upwards of you know 87% so the resolution rates have become better so these customers who were even who have defaulted uh, their their resolution rates are are getting better got it okay thanks a lot thank you thank you the next question is from the line of munal shekhar an individual investor please go ahead uh, the, uh, yes uh, i have uh, there is too much deviation from the listed uh, Uh, security house analysis and uh, and, and uh, why there is uh, too much uh, negative number in retail segment uh sir can you repeat your first question deviation in which uh, element you want us to clarify uh because market has accepted uh, uh, too much profit in this quarter uh means uh, from the reputed house uh, analysis uh, security house analysis uh, like uh, icici security has accepted uh, uh, figure around 500 crore uh, profit at this quarter but uh, we have got just <coughs> something uh, 281 crore uh, net profit and uh, mk capital also analyze uh, uh, Too much uh, profit, but we get uh, less uh, profit than this number. So, Raji, is me and uh, and also one more thing I want to add. There is too much uh, speculation is spread around uh, in YouTube and uh, this uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, what are you doing in this regard to control this news? sorry bhraj ji aapki awaaz theek nahi aa rahi thi we were not able to hear you well i think the first part of the question which we could uh, gather was around uh, that the market expectation was a certain number and we had a we have delivered a certain number below expectation is, is that is that yes. a fair question yes. okay so let me respond to that and maybe we can come back to the second question um, so uh, uh, so bhraj ji we will to be honest we will we will not uh, be able to comment uh, and let's say uh, on every quarter's expectations that markets will have i think we at the start of the year uh, we have, we've been saying uh, that uh, you know there is a certain path to our profitability to a 1% roa uh, and which is a journey which is uh, which requires a lot of execution uh, focus uh, it is a, it is it was a 2 to 3 year journey that we that we had highlighted number 1 number 2 as as the kind of uh, you know period plays out of course there are a lot of external factors that also come in and you would appreciate that over the last one year 
there has been a significant spike in interest rates uh, generally in the environment as well, uh, which resulting into NIM compression not only for us uh, across all the banks. But I think there are certain principles with which uh, you know we work. Uh, there is a certain strategy which is uh, in place, and we are sticking to that strategy. And just from a profit standpoint, because that was a specific question that you had, for us, uh, it's very important to get the uh, the NNPA and security receipts uh, also below 1%, right? So it's important that we keep improving our PCR for the bank, we keep reducing the drag, and, and keep working on expanding the operating profit, right? And, and that's that's a work which we keep executing uh, day in, day out. Um, we also take, by the way, through this question of, you know, uh, a feedback that uh, maybe uh, the expectation itself in the first place needs to be managed better, and that's something we will be happy to, uh, you know, communicate more emphatically and effectively um, on an ongoing basis. Yeah, I, I, we were sorry, we are not very clear about your second question. If you can just um, repeat the second question. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. The participant has already left the queue. Okay. Uh, We'll no move problem. on to the next question, sir, which is from the line of Srinivas, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning. I have two questions. Uh, actually, uh, what is the guidance for this ROA to products from the current level of 55%? As at the end of FI25, where would we expect it to be? And what would be the impact on the bottom line? And second question is, like, Prashant sir was saying that, from 8,000 and odd levels, like the security receipts on the IRC portfolio have come down to 6,000 and odd. 25% recovery has happened. But if we see the uh, I mean, presentation, like uh, the uh, security receipts as a percentage of advances is only 0.8%. That comes to roughly 1850 crores. So what is this difference between 1850 and uh, 6,000 and odd, 4,000 plus crores? Can we assume that like uh, once the provision becomes zero, entirely this 4,000 crores would be accretion to the profit, bottom line? Yeah, so, so basically 0.8% is the net carrying value of SR, security receipt, after making the provision. A and once, like, if net carrying value comes down to zero, then whatever recovery would come uh, would be directly addition to the PNL. The second question on the uh, on the ROA creative products, uh, you know, um, our our objective is to and again uh, the first point there is uh, we are talking about you know large scale distributions. Uh, therefore, the path towards migrating uh, towards a higher ROA creative products uh, is something that we keep calibrating over a period of time. Currently, uh, which we are running at about 55 percent. Uh, the trajectory would be continue to improve that. Uh, you could, you would continue to see about, uh, you know, five to ten percent improvement in that mix over the next, uh, you know, six to nine months. I think that's really where we will uh, continue to work. Now, uh, what does that mean from uh, from an ROA perspective? Uh, uh, ultimately, uh, some of these products on the margin. I say again, there are two elements. One is on the margin, and what is the, what it does to the book. On the margin, which means through the disbursement mix, uh, you know, these products are already uh, generating an ROA which could be about uh, you know 60 to 70 basis points higher uh, than what uh, let's say the other products would be. But for those to get expressed on the book, uh, you know, could could take about uh, you know uh, anywhere between two to three years. So uh, it is it is a it is like a you know on the margin you might end up making today about two, three basis points on the book uh, every quarter, but it will take uh, some amount of time before it starts getting reflected on the book. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as the last question for today. I would now hand over the conference to Mr. Prashant Kumar for his closing remarks. Over to you, sir. Uh, again, again, thank you, everyone, for joining our uh, earning calls too early in the day. Thank you so much, and wish you all the very best. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings the conference call to an end. Thank you, members of the management. On behalf of Yes Bank, we thank you for all joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.